Welcome back to Do Rock Hero! It seems the old Do Rockster might have fatality the swooping down lava shot for being the preferred Shang Tsung jail mine establishing shot. But, uh, <laughs> we've finally come to this. It's the Bee Women plot. And of course, the first thing they do is kill a random prisoner. We know this is Khan's jail, so not all people here are guilty, and most would be against Shao Khan, like the Bee Women, so this comes off a bit odd for them to do. All they had to do was make this guy a Shao Khan guard, and there's absolutely Absolutely no problem, but oh, of course, if Conquest has the choice of making little sense, yeah, that's exactly what they'll do. Sung tries a little your soul is mine on them, but it's blocked by their necklace. This is probably something that could have just been a power of the bee women's race, if not part of their plot involving the slight retconning of Vorpax. What are you waiting for? Nothing. <laughs> Did you really expect me to fight the Emperor's warriors? Emperor. My Emperor. Yes, Vorpax was a bee woman the whole time. Meaning all those little setups of her betraying Sung in favor of Shao Kahn were completely useless as the only reason she ever had to do those was either escape to go get her people, which she has had the opportunity to do several times, or make Shao Kahn think she and her royal beeness would be on his side. Giving them the opportunity to surprise Shao Kahn with a sneak attack, but no, they immediately fight him, so Vorpax accomplished absolutely nothing. Who let Raiko in here? You know he goes through my things! Come on, Shao Kahn, you've been warned this since the pilot. You don't need it anymore. Oh. That's right, guys. This is the episode that actually has Raiko in it. Are you excited? Well, don't be. Their warriors appeared as if from nowhere. How many? Nearly 50. All female. I would have stopped them, but I was too busy crying after one of them rejected my date proposal. They took Shang Tsung. How could just a handful of women steal my sorcerer? Yes, that coveted sorcerer you don't utilize anymore, and heaven the highly secure giant mine prison that Shang Tsung often kills the guards of and takes mini vacations from. How could they ever get him out of that? Oh yes, it's lovely. We'll take this. But I think I this make is the decisions. We'll take this. Let's not alienate the customer. A man. Finding someone I can deal with. Can you help me find a more convincing dumb recorder? What, what, are, you, what are you doing this? Get out of here. Uh, Don't come back. If he lays a hand on you, come, on, come back and tell me. Zero, the Mortal Kombat Problem Solver. Or Zero, the Fresh Maker. He's an ass. Yep. Man. Ooh, I'm glad we're continuing that minor story element about sexism from six episodes ago. But it's better this time because now Taj is the one being blatantly sexist. But you know what I mean. Look around. Don't you think men consider themselves better than women? Oh, not all men. <sighs> yeah, get that one going on Twitter, Ciro. Fuck me. A small raiding party got inside Shao Kahn's borders. There was a fight. But how? My enemy who wants to destroy my home got attacked? That depresses me so much. All the warriors were women. Oh, so that's why we went into that sexism stuff. That sure was convenient. I still don't understand who could... Wow, Raiden has gotten to the point of, I will just leave mid-sentence if you're just gonna bitch. Nice. Hey, Shadow Priest, are you impressed with my staff? I felt like this was a take a walk with the staff day. Though, I can't believe I've walked so far away from my throne. I hope it's doing okay. Ooh, look at this empty throne. No. Her name is Kriya. What have 
I not heard of this woman before now? I don't know. The title was right under you. You really should have seen it. Oh! Her home is distant. She's been moving toward Outworld for years. Yes, we never saw her coming, even though it's been an apparently obvious trip over this way for years. <laughs> I'm fired, aren't I? How does it feel to be the slave, Shang Tsung? Do you enjoy this? It is nice to see Vorpax get this moment of being liberated from Shang Tsung, especially as their dynamic in the series is forever changed from this point, but the ease and quickness of this new situation kinda takes away from it having as much impact as it could have. If we'd been given another episode to have seen the start of the Bee Women's invasion, making Shao Kahn desperate enough to take Sung and Vorpax out of the mines, leading to Vorpax covertly aiding her race so they can gain entrance to the Outworld, and then not until the very end when Shang Tsung really needs her does she betray him and reveal her real allegiance, it would have felt much bigger and also given reason for Vorpax's getting closer to Khan scenes. The way she used you to spy on Outworld. And Earthrealm. My time here was very useful. How? What did you possibly learn as a prisoner in those damn mines besides... Khan security sucks, Shang Tsung equals bitter, and Kung Lao equals against Shao Kahn. That could have been discovered within a few minutes. Bow to my ruler. Queen Kriya. Uh, for the leader of the group currently kicking out World's ass off screen, I expected someone who, oh, I don't know, at least looked like they had seen a fight? Well, there was the one time, and I did not much care for it. And wait, Vorpax had to give back the necklace? They just gave that to her, and they seriously gave her the Queen's one? Don't you think a few more of those might have been useful? Who in this realm might oppose us? Less warriors, perhaps. Time well spent! There are three near here that I know of. Enemies of Shao Kahn? Definitely. Excellent. Then we're allies. Hmm. Earth mortals are... Independent. Yes, as opposed to all those completely submissive races we've seen. Raiden comes by again for story time, telling them about the legend of the seed that would spread around bringing prosperity to where it bloomed, but death elsewhere. You know, cryptic crap, because Raiden can only converse with other gods, so it's hardly like they would have up-to-date information on who the hell Kree is and what she does. This story is told while showing Kriya using the power of instant lump-in-the-ground beehive, which ruins a bit of that maybe they are actually allies thing that this episode plays around with. All I know is... Something new has arrived in Earthrealm. That could describe almost every episode, Raiden. God of useless. Well, I hope my story was relevant, cause I kinda just flipped through my book of Raiden's tall tales. We do learn that glowing together twigs and dirt makes you very sweaty. Well, except for your head and hair. Let's not be gross. Double do rock! How did they do it? How did they make the dark part so blue in this scene? It looks really weird. Why the hell is Shao Kahn taking a tour of his prison? I imagine everyone in there wants to kill him. Does he think he's gonna find a door wedged open to explain how the secure fortress of a mine could be breached? There's one prisoner still alive, but he's too weak to talk. I thought you said they were all female, Raiko. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably just a minor then. I guess they're not really going to be able to tell us anything, but they attacked me. Oh! She has my sorcerer. I don't know what I'll do without my sorcerer. I sort of keep imprisoned while he constantly enacts his own agenda, which sometimes I seem to be aware of. Will Shang Tsung seek revenge against me for what I've done to him? Probably. It's almost like you just should have killed him. Hey, Tasha, you here? 
Taj is not here. We've come to ask her. Zero, the most diplomatic Mortal Kombat character. I love that they keep doing this. Is this really the best way you can think of to have fight scenes occur, Conquest? Ciro, the supposed good guy, moronically attacks people clearly there to talk to him. Also, keep in mind, this desperate fight scene is within the same episode where we're told a big fight between Outworld and Korea's B-Women is taking place but never gets shown. This this extremely pointless fight is made even worse by the fact that Daniel Bernhardt, for what Ever reason isn't actually performing his moves in this scene. So Ciro, who is usually at least the best in fight scenes, instead has an obvious fight double trying to cover his face with his hair the whole time. Warpex? He didn't give me a chance to explain. He attacked before asking questions. That doesn't sound like Ciro. <laughs> Queen Kriya, she sends you an invitation to join her, to help her defeat Shao Kahn. But you work for Shao Kahn, at least Shang Tsung. No, I loathe them both. I did what I had to to stay alive. No, Vorpax, you really didn't just do what you had to. You aided Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn in many ways that you shouldn't have, but this turn for your character hadn't been thought out at that time, so oops! Until we were ready to make our next move. You've been down there with me, Taja. Deb blind for a little continuity. Of course, if we're bringing that up, we're also reminding you of your dad you were looking for in that episode when you were down there with me, who we might have just killed randomly. Oops again! We don't know for sure whose side she's on. Now you want us to trust her in this Empress Kriya who looks to be as powerful as Shao Kahn? We didn't say trust. But I think we might at least consider what she has to offer. Yep, Ciro's on board with this because it's one of his more open days, apparently. But yes, yeah, still on these days he'll fight you before listening, but then he will at least listen with his ears open. And since Ciro is completely pro the B Women Army, that drops that little battle of the sexes crap between him and Taja. A good point to that. So far, the only thing that's prevented our home from being ruled over by Outworld is a set of Elder God rules. He can't invade unless he's the ultimate victor in Mortal Kombat. In other words, for as long as he follows those rules. What if someday he decides to defy the Elder Gods and comes to finish us? He can't, Zero. Send Rain. Well, that didn't count because... It's uh, kind of weird when you get the reasonable Ciro episodes when this is the same guy who might tie you up with a swinging blade above your head for trying to talk to him. Let's at least see what she's like. Fine, I don't have a problem with that. You're free to make your own decisions. Go right ahead. You won't come with us? No. Something's not right here. Then wouldn't it make sense to check out her operation and see it for yourself rather than sit in the dark? You lose your Kung Lock title for this one, sir. We're going right back to Zero Lock. I hope you're happy. I knew my mother would rescue me someday. Your mother? You're Kriya's daughter? So that means you're some sort of princess. In a way, I am. That's why she took her time getting me out of there, because I'm royalty. I like that they don't even question the fact that this woman could be Borpax's mother. Guess they've just seen too many old people that don't age that doesn't even make them blink anymore. It's sad when not believing everything, even after you've seen it, then going to being so blasé about it, it's not even worth a mention, is the biggest development you've given these characters. I am Kriya, and this is my gift. Will you talk with me? All right. Take him back to camp. Wait, I thought my own Shang Tsung pet was a gift. You just take back everything. You are evil. We are powerful people. When we breed, our traits prevail. And the others, the original people, just disappear? Over many lifetimes, 
Uh, yeah, doesn't really make it better. It's just trading a direct invasion with force to one being under the banner of we come in peace. Which isn't a bad idea for the show or anything. I just don't know why she actually told Kung Lao that or why he accepts it like it might be an okay thing. It's like, well, the human race will be wiped out completely, but I won't be around to see it. Not my problem. I mean, who could actually think like that? I know, the end result sounds sort of unthinkable. The point is, we won't be here to see it. Oh, zero, zero, zero. You prideless sack of shit. I think you need to put a noob bot back together so you get a little bit of that giving a shit back. Maybe just a half Sabot. We don't need you turning back into Mr. Pride Shine or anything. Kriya gives a little demonstration of how the bee women apparently don't get sick and can insta heal with their blood. Kind of seems like something Vorpax could have used to get out of jail. It seems slightly useful, but I guess she just never thought of that. This. You can inherit from us. Yeah, except humanity wouldn't really be inheriting it if all offspring are just your race, now would they? Kung Lao spies on one of their kids doing a little glow hatching, because the children are like larva and they just hatch into an adult. Sure, that makes no sense at all with the development of a humanoid species, but... Be women! Make this good news. I love you! I said good! Four packs. She was an accomplice in the attack. Has everyone turned on me? Yes, two prisoners, your most trusted people. That's pretty much your whole army, isn't it? You've still got me, Shao Kahn! Why haven't you turned on me? My aggression will be against Kriya, not against Earthrealm itself. Will the Elder Gods see that distinction? I'm defending myself! I'll crush Kriya! And if part or all of Earthrealm is damaged in the process, so be it. He can't, Ciro. H how did you do this episode? You've seriously made Ciro the smartest of the trio! That's... that's just not right! I'll give my reasons to the Elder Gods after the deed is done. It's really that easy? They won't notice until after you fuck shit up? No wonder Khan has gotten away with blatantly sending assassins after Kung Lao. The Elder Dix wouldn't notice until he didn't show up for the next Mortal Kombat. Maybe. Why has Khan ever bothered with the sacred suggestions of Mortal Kombat if they are so easy to break? Though surely the Earthrealm Protector might actually have to do some of that protecting if Khan did this. Unless it was quiet time in the woods, of course. Or time to pick up at the bar. What the? What the? So, did you think I just called this Amazonian race the bee women because of them acting in a colony and hatching to adulthood? <laughs> no, 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 is much more on the nose than that. Yes, you are really seeing this. Inside the dirt mound is a complete beehive with honeycomb that contains bee baby women waiting to hatch. Just, just take that in. This thing's also a bit of a TARDIS as it's much bigger on the inside. Don't know where those lower exits lead to either. And there's buzzing in there because why the shit not? None of this makes sense anyway, so why not have the babies or the women or whatever buzzing? Not a pretty sight, is it? Kriya's a monster. Okay, it's stupid, yes. And sure, bringing that many kids with you is a pretty monstrous move, but they are a different race, and just because they nonsensically produce like bees isn't really the reason to condemn the race. The fact they want to overrun you is, but that one was apparently okay until the blatant bee business. She's here now. Because she's not bound by the laws. Yes, she is. 
She just hasn't broken any yet. I cannot interfere unless the rules have been broken. At what point of the invasion does this have to be at to be a violation of the rules, Raiden? Well, I guess they haven't actually killed anyone yet. No, oh, except the males Kriya mated with to make her beehive, which apparently might happen if the males are weak, so, I mean, that makes her death not even really count. They might as well call themselves the Elder Gods of Technicalities. You can't invade a realm unless you beat them in Mortal Kombat, or find one of our many secret loopholes. And she's still going to win. Bangla. Calm down. Breathe and listen. Tell me what to do. Raiden. Raiden! That's our Raiden! Listen. I have told you what to do. Give my love to the zeros. Raiden! They're adults in a day or two. The people of Earth will become one with yours in a matter of years, not centuries. And that really makes all the difference about you being evil or not. Apparently. Well, I'm sure Ciro is now gonna be pig-headed about turning on the bee with Ciro, you're being too reasonable of a character! What are you doing? These are my friends. Then, sadly, You've all become my enemies. But perhaps we could become friends. Hmm, I don't know. I think we should be enemies, certainly. Take him away. Huh, yeah, I suppose telling you ha ha I know you're bad while being surrounded by your army wasn't the brightest plan. Korea doesn't have Kung Lao killed because having the Mortal Kombat champion imprisoned is still not an aggressive move against the Earth realm to the gods of Useless, whereas killing him would be. Maybe. Of course. The seed. Huh, Shang Tsung. I didn't realize you were in here too till your theme played. I'm listening, Raiden. What's the matter? Can't fight without your powers? I don't need them to destroy you. Coward! Go! Uh-oh, someone broke a rule. Yes. Slapping Kung Lao, the first rule that's been broken here. And then Shang Tsung receives the punishment of being freed from jail too. Yep, yeah, he probably feels pretty silly now that he ever bothered to get Kung Lao to waive the rules in order to fight him before. The threat to you both is great, do you understand? Best friend! Kriya has a nest of warriors. It has to be destroyed. There's nothing I can do while she has a gemstone around her neck. Well, I mean nothing I can do besides fight her. Or, well, at least have my fight double fight her exceedingly obvious fight double. <laughs> Why would I do that? Why would that explode and then teleport me away? Answers to come never! We have to destroy her nest. I will. I have to save Earthrealm. It is my new home. So the only thing stopping him was that necklace? Really seems like you should have called for backup, Kriya, rather than blowing up for a teleport. What's happening? Shanksung's taking his revenge. Shang killed them. Yeah, you were there. There's no way you wouldn't know that until this point, and you all just sat back and allowed Shang Tsung to create his little genocide city zone. There's some pretty terrible implications here. I mean, sure, you didn't agree with their queen's come in peace until we overrun you plan, but you just condemned the whole group, including a nest of children, to death because of it. 
and they're really just blasé about the whole thing. This is Kung Lao, who sometimes is such a wimp he'll consider giving up his home to a crime syndicate rather than fight for it. And now he's sitting back and allowing his mortal enemy to slaughter women and children. If you're going to have the main characters decide they have to allow a great evil to occur to save their world, you have to at least make it a decision with a little weight behind it. But these women were supposed to be warriors, and apparently are good enough to take the fight to Shao Kahn, though based on this episode, if he has more people than some mind prisoners is questionable. However, these would be what you'd have to say are the elite of the Amazonian bee women, since they are with the queen, and they are all wiped out in one afternoon by one guy. Conquest! Just... Ah! We found she has to mate with a male from each realm she intends to invade. Another traitor. Don't worry, we'll never find out who the outworld traitor that made with Kriya was. No good reason to mention that. And how many hides has she established across our borders? Thousands. She managed to fuck a thousand guys in the outworld and only got one hive in the earth realm? Guess you just spread your legs open there and the men come buzzing in. Unless she found a maid who didn't suck and die immediately and got him to pollinate her a thousand times before he exploded into a bonality. We are under attack, reporting across our borders. Alert the troops. We are at war! Off screen! The best kind of war! The invaders coming in peace plot could have been good, but man did Conquest screw up its execution of it. They could have gone with these women having this somehow overpowering genes thing, but the beehive just... No! And now they've attached Vorpax to it so it'll never go away. Push, push, motherfucker! Seriously, who the hell was buzzing? They weren't literal bees, you stupid show! And I don't know what amazed me the most. The bee women? The main character approved eradication of said bee women? Or Ciro, for the most part, making informed decisions? Next time on Conquest, we get some backstory on the slaughterer of bee women himself, Shang Tsung, and his relationship with Omegis and their former master, Proto Bo Raicho. Tell me what to do. Raiden!